All right, guys. All right, let's stand up. Let's stand up and let me see your faces. Let me see your faces. I want to teach faces, not names. I want to teach faces, not names. All right, all right. We have what? We have what on Friday? We have what on Friday? Quest. 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 Okay. We have we have quest number five on Friday, and we have our final quest. We have our final quest um, on on. Um, well, I, I think I'm gonna offer. It's on. It's like on Friday the 18th. But that seems like insanity to make you guys wait till Friday the 18th to take it. So I think I'm going to offer it. They're having a reading day next Thursday. They're having a reading day next Thursday. So I think I'm gonna offer a, a, ver a version of the quest next Friday during class time. So you can take your final quest next Friday during class time. It'll be an integration quest. It'll be just an integration quest, which can get you guys possibly um, heading, heading home for Christmas a little bit, for Christmas break a little bit earlier. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Warren. Let's talk about this quest. Let's talk about this quest. The department, the department, um, well, actually the whole university. Uh, um, in April, they found out that, that online assessments, online assessments are, are prone to cheating. Would you agree or disagree? Would you agree or disagree? Online assessments, students might cheat on online assessments more than they might cheat on in-class assessments. Would you agree or disagree? Okay, so the-, the yeah, I read an article about it. Yeah, there we go. So the department, the department, the math department um, has made the, the decision that we, they, they, they directed us to do everything possible to make sure that does not happen, okay? Because it undermines the very fabric of the university. I mean, it seems innocent, but it undermines the very fabric of the university and the credibility of the university, okay? So these are some procedures that have been put in place to try to help with this, and I've got to do my best to make sure everybody does this, okay? So, you must have your Zoom on when you take your online assessment. Your hands have to be, you test this out before Friday, I have to be able to see your hands and the assessment. I've got to be able to see your hands and the assessment. The video is recorded. The video is recorded for the department, okay, if the department wants to go back and look at it. Your audio must be on, so you need to be in a quiet space. You need to be in a quiet space, so you're not disturbing others, so that it can also be recorded. You're only allowed to use your phone at the very end to take pictures, to take pictures. And the department believes this will cut down significantly on, 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 online, on online cheating on the assessment. So your hands need to be in a place. You got, they have to be recorded and the quest has to be recorded. Um, you're allowed to open the quest. If you print the quest, that's fine. But the moment you start taking the quest, okay, everything gets recorded, including your audio. And the phone's only out allowed to be out at the very end. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? If it is not possible, if it is not possible for you to do this because of whatever reasons, then, then I'm allowed to give you a um, oral exam. I'm allowed to give you a test where it's a talking test, okay, as an alternative. So um, that's, that's an alternative uh, where usually in 15 minutes of me asking questions and you feeding back answers, um, that's, that, that I can do that. Most students don't think that's as much fun um, because it's just more, it's more stressful, but, but it's, it's, just, it's just as valuable as far as an assessment is concerned. So we're all on the same page. We're all on the same page. Okay, all right. So I'm, now, that I've, now that I've taken care of that, we have been talking about well, the quest will be on content from 5.1, 5.2, 5.4, and 5.5, where we talked about the derivative of the exponential function, the definition of the exponential function, the, how the log and the exponential are inverse functions of each other. You're gonna to wanna to go back and read that stuff, guys. You wanna go back and look at your notes. Um, 
The homework kind of questions that I assign, you'll see some of those on the quest. You'll see some of those on the quest. But it's also going to be part theory. There's going to be true and false questions. But you're used to taking my quests by now. You're used to taking my quests by now. It's only going to be handwritten. It's only going to be handwritten. It's only going to be handwritten. Okay, there will probably be one more web assign that I'll assign next week. There'll probably be one more web assign that will be due on Wednesday that will help you get ready for the final, for the final quest. The final quest, guys, is going to be just like the rest of the quest. There'll be a 30-minute quest. It's not suddenly I'm going to throw a two-hour exam at you. Um, I've never not given cumulative finals, but this semester I'm not. This semester I'm not. It's just going to be on integration. Okay, let's stand up again. Let's stand up again. Stretch, stretch. Okay, okay, let's sit back down. Um, we've been talking about the definite integral. So read this to me. I want to make sure you guys can read this. What does this say? Read this to me. Can you at least read it? The definite integral from A to B. Definite integral from A to B of f of x. Dx. dx. Now, now this could be something that would be buried in a true-false question on the final quest. What's this defined to be? Well, it's the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum of k equals 1 to n of f evaluated at x sub k times delta x. Now, if you don't explain who the delta x is and you don't explain who the x sub k are, then it's false. It's false. The delta x is b minus a over n, and the x sub k's are equal to a plus k delta x as k goes between 0 and n. And I assigned in, in, in 5 point, I mean in 6.3, where you actually did this Riemann sum for 4, 2, or 5 subintervals, just like what we were doing in class last time. As n goes to infinity, this goes to the area under the curve. If you have your function, here's your a and your b, and what this limit goes to is the actual area under the curve, which is nothing like shapes from the Greeks. That's why they thought Newton was wrong. The people at Cambridge are like, you can't find areas of shapes like this. Squares, triangles, circles, trapezoids, yes. But shapes like this for arbitrary functions, no. Okay, so I just want to look at, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share my screen for you guys and show you those questions that I assigned. So I think 12 was one of them, 15 was one of them, and maybe, I don't know what the other one was. It was nine. 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 Thank you. Nine was another one. So in one case, the functions x squared were doing right-hand endpoints. You only need to be concerned with right-hand endpoints. In 12, you're doing right-hand endpoints for x cubed. And in 15, you're doing right-hand endpoints for 1 over x. So let's see. I've got x cubed, and I want to compute the Riemann sum with n equals 2 and 5 and I didn't make you do 10. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to stop sharing, and then I'm going to start sharing again. I know you're bored. Wake up. Wake the hell up. What did I just say? What did I just say? Wake the hell up. There we go. There we go. Wake the hell up. Let me, let me see. Where's my, oh, I better, I've got to go back to this. Sorry, guys. I'm still not real good at this sharing stuff. I'm not a good sharer, I guess is what they would say. Okay, I've already, pro I've already got us here. The function was x cubed. The function was x cubed. The interval was 0 to 1. And if you want to look at this, this if you just type in Riemann sum, math world Wolfram, you, you can go to this and cheat on your homework. You cannot cheat on the quest. Okay, here's my function, 0 to 1, two subintervals. n is 2, that's right here. Here's my right-hand approximation. You can see they have the max, left, right, midpoint, 
we're only going to be doing right. And then you can see here's my two rectangles. The actual area under the curve is 0.25. My approximation is 0.5625. But I also, I also ask you guys to do five. And this would be the approximation with five. And you can see here, we're still not even really close. We don't even have a decimal point correct. It's 0.36, and we've got 0.25. Now, they ask you to do 10. I said you don't need to do that. But if we do it with 10, we can see that these rectangles, these areas, if I add them up, they're getting like they're looking more like the area under the curve. But still, really, I don't even have a decimal point correct. It's 0.3025. If I do 100, which I'd never want to do by hand, then at least it's beginning to look a little bit more like the area under the curve. And now at least I've got a decimal point or two correct. I don't know if it'll like me or not, but let's do 300. It's probably not going to want to do it. And now we, we're seeing that it does look a lot like the area under the curve, but I still don't have a super great approximation. I'm only accurate to the 100th place. To get the actual area, I would need to add, take this to infinity. So let's put that in there and see what it does. And it says, you're a moron. I can't do that. So this was kind of where they were before Newton. You had the idea this could be done. Guys, Archimedes, Archimedes was almost there. Archimedes was almost there. And do you know when Archimedes was? Do you know when Archimedes lived? Do you even know who Archimedes is? Archimedes is one of the greatest inventors of all times. If, what the man did was insane. Um, but he was before Christ. And Newton was after William and Mary. The College of William and Mary was founded. Newton, 1700. Archimedes, Archimedes before Christ. And Archimedes was really, really close. Archimedes was the one who found the volume of a sphere. That's one of his main things he did. Found how to figure out how to find the volume of a sphere. Before Archimedes, there was no formula. But Archimedes thought about using Riemann sums, had the idea of an integral, but he, he wasn't at a place where he could actually figure it out. Archimedes essentially made a laser gun, but people don't. Archimedes sank the Roman fleet using mirrors when, as they tried to come and take Syracuse. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Archimedes was a sick pup. Archimedes, he made inventions that were water wheels that would pour scalding oil onto the Romans as they tried to scale, as they, they were used to people holding up pots of oil and pouring it down, and so the Romans learned, once they throw, you scale. But Archimedes made something that perpetually threw scalding oil on them. Um, two years, he kept them out. Two years he kept them out with his inventions. And then, when they finally did take the city, the commander said, whatever you do, do not harm Archimedes. The first soldier that saw Archimedes killed him right there because they were just so angry with this guy. And supposedly Archimedes died like this. He was down on the ground drawing out a new invention and the soldier came into the room, and Archimedes told him to get out of his light. He was casting a shadow on his drawing. And then the soldier killed him right there and then. Okay, so, so Archimedes was really close, but he wasn't able to find the fundamental theorem of calculus. So today is your Christmas. Today is your mathematical Christmas. Today I give you the present that changed the world, the fundamental theorem of calculus. The fundamental theorem of calculus. So here we go on our little adventure. We've got a function, f. So you draw what I draw. Draw yourself an x, y axis. Draw yourself an x, y axis. Draw yourself a function. Maybe it looks something like my function. In mark 3 and 10, 
Mark 3 and 10 down in the domain. And draw some straight lines up. Draw some straight lines up from 3 and 10. Now what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find a way to find the area under this function between 3 and 10 with zero error, with no error whatsoever. Now, of course, the people at Cambridge would have been like, Newton, that's impossible. It's impossible to find this. It's not, it's not any of the shapes that we have. And yes, if you could take and limit as n went to infinity, I agree, you could get there, but you can't add up infinitely many things. And Newton's like, well, just wait, just wait. Let's define an area function. First of all, the thing that we want is this. So write that number down. Write that number down. Write the definite integral from 3 to 10 of f of x dx. That's what we're trying to find. Now let's see if you've been paying attention at all. What would this number represent? What would this number represent? If this is the function, this is 3, and this is 10, what would the definite integral from 3 to 10 of f of x dx represent? What would it represent as far as this drawing is concerned? The area under the curve. The area under the curve. It would be this area under the curve. So my goal is to find, my goal is to find this. And let's even put out a real, let's put out a real question. Let's see what you, your high school teachers taught you. Draw an xy axis. Draw an xy axis. Here's your f of x. f of x is equal to x 